Hi, Denise Gwen, reading aloud for you from my short story, A Good Christian Woman, Chapter 17, Part 2. She gazed at me hard, and a trickle of sweat formed between my shoulder blades and crept down my back, lodging in the bra strap. I, 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 I don't remember any more of it. I'm sorry. She leaned back in the armchair. It was summer, you know, a glorious day. I'd been in the backyard with him all afternoon watching him play. I kept up my sweet, soft smile of understanding, wondering where this was going. We had a fence all the way around the property, did you know that a tiny stream runs past my house at the back, down that long hill? Oh, oh yes, I know. Don't you remember, Mrs. McClintock? The neighborhood kids and I used to sled down your hill in the winter time. We dare each other to fall into the creek and see who got soaked the worst. Yes, I do recall that. Your hill was the best for sledding. True. But I didn't know you kids made a point of falling into the creek. You were risking pneumonia. Oh yes, I laughed. We loved danger. Back in the day, even the little river at the bottom of my property used to be a roaring stream. Was it really? Yes, indeed it was. Her eyelids fluttered closed, her head drooped. The skin at her neck mottled. The double chin trebled. I thought she drifted off to sleep, but then she started with a gasp and I jumped. She gazed at me with her bright bird-like eyes. I hope you don't mind me talking about Joey. Oh no, not at all, I said with an uneasy smile. She fell silent for a long moment and I thought she'd fallen asleep for real this time, but then she said, it was summer, you know. I'd been watching him in the backyard, and he knew better than to go down the hill to the stream. He knew it wasn't safe. Hmm? And then the phone rang in the kitchen. Where is this going? The facts didn't make sense. When was she going to get to the part where she left her son unattended, and he wandered off, leaving the gate swinging open? Her story sounded odd to my ears. She'd missed a key part, and I kept waiting for her to get there to get to the point. It didn't sound right. I kept wanting to correct her, but I didn't. I listened. I was torn, you see. I couldn't bear to ignore a ringing telephone. I'd been brought up to answer a phone. Good manners and all that. And I had a pretty good idea it'd be my husband, and it was. Ralph called me, called me from work. That's right, I said slowly. Everyone had landlines back then, didn't they? Yes, we all had landline telephones. Except for that show. You know the one I'm talking about? Um, Star Trek? Yes, yes, that's it. Dear God, my memory's slipping. Yes, back then, nobody knew what a handheld phone looked like. Except on Star Trek, of course. Yes. I ran into the house. I was upset with my husband for calling, and I didn't want to disturb Joey. You see? Yes. He was happily playing away in his sandbox. So I ran into the kitchen for only a moment. It was my husband. He wanted to let me know when he'd be home. I see. And then... When I went back outside, he was gone. Gone? Yes, she said, gazing levelly at me. He'd been snatched out of the yard. 